What's up everyone? Main Fly Guys here with another quick tutorial for you guys. Um, today I'm just going to tie a very small um, bait fish pattern that is great for pretty much anything. I typically use them for stripers, but I mean, bass love them, pike love them, combo colors are endless, you know, one of those flies. Um, I initially saw this pattern from a guy in South Carolina who used them to imitate little bunker flies. Um, so I just kind of went from there and have made it my own a little bit. But um, first thing is to put in some flash. Not too much. I only use four strands, five strands, nothing serious. Um, lock them in. And I go right to the bend of the hook here. I want this fly to be anywhere between three and four and a half inches long. So I just take my ruler. You want your flash to be about at the end uh, of your fly. So this one da, 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 is pretty good. I'm just gonna snip a bit off the end here. Um, I don't overlap the, the rest of the flash. I just cut it and save it for another fly. Um, these you can really pump out, so you, uh, if you're, you know, need to tie a couple dozen, you can do it in a day pretty easily. Okay, so, first piece, I'm going to do it in an olive and uh, white color. Um, first piece is going to start on top, and the top, you want the, um, I call them the rats to be gone, so what I do is I strip it hold it to the length I want and then pull the excess out so now we have the ones that aren't as long throw those away and we have the ones that are it looks like not a lot of material don't worry it's not a big deal all right so tie these in to about the end of your flash so right there is pretty good tie those in on top now don't let them roll or anything just stay on top Right. You don't want them to flare up a whole lot, so make sure they stay down. Don't don't cinch down too hard. You don't want them to flare up too much. So right here is pretty good. So I'm just gonna cover them up, and I'm just gonna work back a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna move a little forward, right to about the point of the hook. Should be your next tie in. And when I'm grabbing the hair, I don't want it to flare up, so I'm grabbing it from the tip. If you grab hair from the bottom, it'll flare up more, so stay stay to the tip. Boy, I am running low on this deer tail. I'm gonna have to go into my stash, maybe. Um, okay, and same thing. I want this one to be about the same length as the previous one. So I go in, just measure it up, drop it in, give it a few securing wraps. When I give my securing wraps on this pattern, I usually work backwards. I usually work backwards instead of forwards. Um, it just allows me to get more wraps in there. Alright, so now I have two on top. I'm going to make sure it's important that they are on top and not rolling on the bottom at all. So make sure you stay on top um, with your wraps. Now I'm going to stay with white but I'm gonna switch from the top and I am going to move to the bottom now you want these to go half as far so you don't want them to go all the way back you want them to go half so measure out to where it is about half so right there is about good and lock that in don't poke yourself or intentionally poke yourself that way it doesn't surprise you when you do poke yourself because it it will happen all right so make sure these stay on once you like it and they're pretty centered go ahead snip it and move forward okay now work backwards to where you just tied that one in. Don't move ahead to tie in the next step. Um, I want this one to flare up just a little bit. So I'm gonna take it from a little further down the tail.
but again you want it to be roughly about the same distance on top you want to work it back to the tail pretty close to Okay, and then another one on the bottom. I like to make this one a little thicker, just because this is going to be, you know, main of the body. Some guys will fill um, in between their uh, in between their segments. They'll put flash, some type of flash in there, and I don't. I don't think it. I don't think the fish care. And these are these are flies made for fishing, not for show, so to speak. So I don't spend a whole lot of time um, making sure that they're super pretty, you know. Um, so again, same thing. You want these to be about three quarters of the way to your previous belly wrap. So a little bit shorter, not much, maybe even more than three quarters, 80% or something like that, but just a little bit shorter. Um, they definitely don't want to be longer, so make sure you don't time in longer. And the reason I do it a little thicker is because as you use, as they become shorter and shorter, the tapered end is thinner and thinner, so it's tough to build a really good tummy with not a lot of fibers. Um, also, make sure you're separating your fibers out that way, it's just a little easier to sort of orientate everything. Wrap it in. Okay, not bad. So, we are going to tie in one more white on top and one more white on the belly. I'm going to speed this up really quick just so you guys don't have to uh, see it. So, I'm just going to speed it up real quick to get through this step. Okay, so now you should have something that looks like this. So as you see, it's getting just shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter here. And this is pretty much staying the same length. Um, because there is, a, you, there is a little divide there, you can almost see it, but it's a perfect opportunity to put some flash down. Um, I like the flashaboo just because it's a little thicker. You know, it's a little thicker and takes up a little more space, so I do three or four strands on each side. Um, again, this fish isn't very, this bait fish isn't very long. So you can do the old wrap around trick. Um, just wrap it around your thread, bring it to the top and you'll see two sides. If you just cinch down, two sides will kind of separate and just pull one to one side and pull the other to the other side and just make sure that they're lying down in that slot area. This way it kind of covers up any deformities there and also makes a good lateral line looking, uh, looking thing. Okay, and that looks pretty decent. It'll be longer, so make sure you snip it. Um, again, I snip it right about to the tail. There we go. So I snip it right to the tail, and I get on there. Yeah. Nope, nope, missed one. Um, so here's what we're working with now. Now we are going to toss the head on. So, uh, sorry, the back. So the back is going to be an olive color. All right, nice. Just a piece of an olive bucktail here. Um, decently thick, it doesn't have to be too anything crazy, but what we want is to make sure that it reaches the back. So make sure you grab pieces that are long enough to be able to reach the back. Okay, so I just measure it up. And get that piece out of there. 
That's not bad, so I'll drop it down. Cinch it on there. Make sure it doesn't roll on you because you really want it to stay on the back. Really don't want it rolling on the belly. So I hold it, clip it, and then I can kind of come in and wrap it up. Now don't worry about building up a head or anything like that. <clears throat> Oops. Don't worry about making a pretty looking head or anything like that. A couple fibers slipped out there. No biggie. Actually, that looks pretty good. Um, because we're going to be putting eyes on this, so it's going to cover up any sort of head blemish. So here I've got my olive on top. And that looks pretty good from the camera's angle. Um, so next step. I'm going to add in some peacock hurl on top. Um, usually like five to seven strands somewhere in there. What do I got here? I think I got seven here. And you can mess around with it, it doesn't really matter. But again, about the same length as your entire fly. Go the entire distance. Good right there. And all I do is Cinch them down a few times, give them a trim, and finish it up. Alright, so there's our body, it looks pretty good. We got that sort of taper, that rounded belly, um, which is probably why the guy I learned it from showed me this pattern as a bunker fly, because it has that sort of rounded belly when you get it in the water um, that imitates a a uh, baby bunker. You know, a little peanut bunker action. We can all get excited about that. I know I can. So, wrap that up. I'm gonna put a drop of cement on. Uh, actually, I'm gonna put a drop of super glue on. Uh, if it's not, ooh, yay. Um, just to keep everything in locked. And as I said before, we're going to put eyes on, so don't worry too much about how clean it is. You know, just make sure it's soaked in there. Get around the head. Make sure they ain't going anywhere. Cool. All right. Um, I am going to give this a moment to dry. But in the meantime, I'm going to decide what kind of eyes I want to put on. I really like this ice looking f eyes, so I'm going to get a few of them out. And I'll fast forward so you guys don't have to watch this dry, because that's not very fun. Alright, so on these living eyes, the uh, pro tip, I think I've shared it before, but if you're having a problem with losing your eyes, like I have before, then stick them on your hand and they'll always be right there. Um, I like this fish to be flattened. So I don't want a lot of body sideways. I want it to be very stream-like. Um, and so when I put the eyes on, I really press them on to give it a sleeker profile. I don't really know why, but I just do. Um, also, when you go to do it, make sure you have your hair, you're pulling it. So like this, so if you want it to be more bulky, you can put the eyes on like this. If you want it to be thinner, you can hold it and put it like that. That will help sort of taper your body. So I want this one to be kind of thin, but not super thin. Also, the eyes have a, a little malfunction there. The eyes have an orientating tip. So you'll see they have like a little point on the back side here. I always have it facing backwards um, for no real reason other than I think it looks cool. But that'll just help you orientate the, uh, the other one.
So make sure you have it lined up right. Because it sure is a problem when they're not. Uh, it's not a huge problem, but it does affect... Um, it does affect the way that it swims. Okay, not bad. So, they look pretty good. So you see how they're nice and parallel? That will help it swim straighter. Does that actually matter? I don't know. But it does allow it to sort of shift left to right in the water and maintain an up and down profile rather than sort of swimming on its side. But, you know, if you're thinking about a dead bait fish commonly swimming on its side, you know, which one is better? Again, I don't know, but this one definitely looks prettier um, this way. So I just let these dry and there will be a gap um, above and below, right there you can see that gap above and below. You can come in and I don't know, okay. Well, uh, you can come in with your UV. This is Loon and just start off slow. You don't need to build up the whole thing it, at once. So start off slow and gradually build your, gradually build your uh, head up. The biggest mistake people make is trying to do the whole thing in one go. If you try to do the whole thing in one go, I can promise you it won't look that great. So just be patient. Build up your head nice and slowly and it will look much, much better. This will help not only your uh, your fly to balance but it will also avoid anything from getting sort of caught in there like uh, seaweed or dust twigs whatever it'll avoid that from getting stop stuck in there um, so you see you can't even really tell that it's there um, but I have a nice solid solid head going. Some people do it all the way around. You can do the whole thing, make it kind of like a little jelly looking head. Um, I don't I don't do that. I just fill in the space because it helps it swim better and avoids things getting stuck in there. Just give it a little spin to even it out. Blast it with your UV light. Blast it. It's been a long day. And uh, you're done. So once you're done that, just, you know, I put them out in the sun to let them dry a little bit longer, but boom, you have this little bait fish and when you put it in the water, it gives a nice taper to it. It kind of makes the deer hair sit down to sort of this type of angle where you get that uh, robust belly kind of bulging out um, and a nice smooth back, so. Here, you, here it is, the little little bait fish pattern. Great for bass, warm water fish. I've even tied them in really small one inch sizes, uh, like little, uh, little elven for trout, and they hit them too, so it's really a great pattern for, for all the sport fish out there. So that's it. Thanks for watching again. Check out my other videos. Uh, check out Instagram page for more, uh, more fishy action, and I uh, hope to see you next time. Thanks.